we draw a contrast between what first century Jews would have understood about that word versus what modern day Christians understand about it. Quantity and quality of time invested. There's a story about a, a rabbi who told the disciples everything is about Torah. And this one disciple that was quite literal said, okay, fair enough. You know, so he followed the rabbi as much as he can. Now, tradition has it that even when a rabbi would go to the bathroom, the disciples would stand close by, possibly not look at him for the sake of modesty. And why would they do it? Is because maybe there's a prayer you pray before or after you relieve yourself. So this rabbi got home the one night and it was time for him to be intimate with his wife. And suddenly they hear a weird sound under the bed. So the rabbi cautiously looks under the bed and he sees this disciple laying there. And he's like, what are you doing? <laughs> and the disciple says to him, what? You said everything is about Torah. Yeah. So I need to understand it. And the rabbi took a moment, looked at his wife, thought, looked at the guy under the bed and said, okay, you can stay, but you can't look. Now, <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe that's actually true, but I think the sentiment of what it's saying is everything is about Torah. So now let's think about that. So the more time a disciple can invest with their rabbi, obviously the better the quality of the education. Because everything is about Torah. When I was between the ages of 20 and 21, I lived uh, right. in, a, in a relationship as, an, as a live-in assistant to a man who became a mentor to me. Right, yeah. And uh, But this was not just any old guy. This guy lived in a beachfront apartment in Santa Monica, California, I among like the Hollywood stars, because he was a multimillionaire. Now, I went in there on the verge of, like, on Skid Row. Like, I was ready to be end up homeless if I didn't take this opportunity. Yeah. And I remember saying to myself, all I have to do is do whatever he tells me to do. Because trying to do it on my own is a complete disaster. My life is a, is a wreck, right? What? So I go in there, and just the way you're describing there, it's like, it, it, there was nothing Jewish about it. He wasn't Jewish. I wasn't Jewish. But it was following that same Jewish principle. And I'm watching him interacting with these doctors and lawyers and celebrities. And he's casual and he's confident. And he starts conversations with people. And he handles the people on the phone a certain way. And then when I leave, uh, I've lost 60 pounds. I mean, I'm tanned and lean and thin and you know, uh, turning female heads, which I never did before that. Um, yeah, right. And, and, and just boldly, confidently interacting with people way ahead of my years. I'm 21, but I'm talking like I'm in my right. late, mid to late 30s or, or early 40s in some cases. You know? And so just the, the way that principle, when, I, when you started to explain this to me about the quantity of the, the amount of time I was like, that's why discipleship is such a challenge for the church, for, for Christians, because what they're hoping to do is, is one night a week for 30 to right. 60 minutes. And it well, doesn't work that way. No, 